Welcome back to the True Blue Riftcast. It's great to be back once again. I'm starting that over. That was terrible. <laughs> that was just bad. That was just bad. I didn't like that. No, let's keep going. No, All right, let's keep going. Do let's it. Keep yeah. Going. All right, let's keep going. I'm Jeremy, and I am joined, as always, by. Hi, I'm Dave, aka Sugar Ray Dodge. How's everybody doing today? Uh, how's it going, Dave? Oh, dude, I'm tired. I don't know if you can tell. But if I sound like I'm about to fall asleep at all during this podcast, I apologize. But at the same time, it'll probably be hilarious because you kind of get to that point where you're really tired, where you start to, you know, not think about what you're saying so much. And you say something stupid or hilarious, sometimes both. So it'll, it'll be interesting. How are Just you? As, I'm, I'm doing fine, actually. Just as long as I don't have to like try and wake you up. Yes. <laughs> because that would just be uh, I'd be I'd be in a world of hurt if I had to finish it off by myself that is but uh, today's going to be a little different um, as we've mentioned the past two episodes uh, today we are going to be taking a look back at Rift Track so far for 2019 today we're going to be going through well I guess the first quarter of it because uh, we're going to split it up just so it doesn't uh, wear on for too long. We're just going to be doing VODs today. We're not going to be doing uh, any of the shorts. Yep. Sure is what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, but uh, we did this last year. Though The reason we're doing this is in two parts is because we did this last year. It's kind of, um, and we talked about six months worth of riff tracks. And he and I jabbered on for two hours. And yeah, we said, if we're going to do this again, then no one's going to listen to two hours of us talking. Because, and at the end of it, it's just like the, and the phone, the app we were using at the time quit on us. I think like what, twice? Yes. Two times we had to restart the recording. Yeah. And it's just like, screw you guys. So now we just use Skype recorder and everything's, everything's awesome. Yeah. We, we were kind of just winging it then too. It was just more of a test podcast than anything else. But, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we don't get into that today. We'll try not to, but let's get started with our first release of 2019. Woo! It was a Rift Tracks Presents release. Bridget and Mary Jo uh, gave us Sherlock Holmes Dressed to Kill. Uh, this was Basil Rathbone as Sherlock Holmes. It was his last turn as Sherlock Holmes after uh, 13 previous films. I was about um, to say, didn't he, didn't he, didn't he, wasn't he in like 30 <laughs> Sherlock yeah, he, Holmes? It's crazy. He did, he did 14 of them. This was the last one. He actually didn't renew his contract because uh, he was being typecast and he resented it. So he just yeah, said, no, you. I'm done. Um, now, the, the first two in the series that he did were actually set in the Victorian times, the original stories, but... Every one after that, all 12 of them were sent in then contemporary times, uh, including this one. I always think that's cool. I always really like it when Sherlock Holmes is in, like, the 40s. Uh, it's, uh, I, I don't know. To me, that's like – I can't remember the name of the actor. Uh, I'm sure it'll come to me later. It was as a British – of course, well, they're all British. All the Sherlock Holmes are British. Well, yeah. Yeah, uh, a show that it was set in the 40s that uh, my parents liked to watch, and that was kind of like my first introduction to Sherlock Holmes. So any Sherlock Holmes I said is in that era as opposed to like the 1890s, which is fine if it's in the 1890s. But for me, if any times in like that World War II, post-World War II era, to me, I just seem kind of home with Sherlock Holmes there. So, yeah. Either, that that's a good that's a good setting. It's it's fine in the original Victorian setting, and the the more modern stuff recently has been okay, I guess. Yeah. Although um, I know a lot of people absolutely love uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch. as uh, Sherlock, but uh, I mean you know and it was fine. I I liked it for what it was, but it didn't feel really like Sherlock Holmes like these do. Yeah, I can dig it. It was a it was a pleasant surprise to start the year out with this wonderful riff from uh, Bridget and Mary Jo. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's it's always cool, like um, because I remember the first time they started off the year. I think it was in twenty seventeen when they started off the year with the Amazing Mister X. 
uh, a movie that has something of a bit of uh, notoriety to it. I mean, it's more well-known, lesser-known movie, The Amazing Mr. X. You would think that something like that they'd want to save for Mike, Kevin, and Bill, but not only did they let them start the year off with it, they, you know, they gave it to Bridget and Mary Jo, which I think, cool, you know? Um, and I think that in 2018 and in 2019, I think, I mean, we're going to talk about quite a few Rift Tracks Presents uh, entries along the way here, but uh, I think that, you know, Rift Tracks Presents has really stepped up in the last couple of years, and I think that that's probably going to continue. Yeah, it's 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 good to see more from from these two teams. And I know we've already talked at length about both of these teams recently, but it's because there's so much good that we can say about them. Yep, absolutely. Our next VOD came on January 18th, and that was your the hunter from the future. <laughs> now, oh my god. This film uh of course stars Red Brown. And, and what else? What else would we know him from, Dave? Uh, I think a little a little movie called Space Mutiny. Yes, that's right, Space Mutiny. Now, this film was originally planned as a four-part miniseries <laughs> with four 50-minute-long parts. Uh, it was going to be broadcast in Italy. Uh, it was it was nominated for three Golden Raspberry Awards for Worst New Star in Red Brown, Worst Musical Score. And worst original song, Yours World. And who oh boy, if you have not watched this riff and heard the uh, the theme song for this movie, Yours World, do yourself a favor and click the link in the description for this episode to watch it on YouTube because it is awful, awful. Now, here's the surprising part. This movie somehow grossed a total of 2.8 million dollars in the u.s wait what yeah in 1983 uh-huh the same year the return of the jedi came out that's right and people have the audacity to complain about ewoks <laughs> yeah when, when when your alternative is your yeah the hunter from the future i mean that no dude i watched this movie and i was just like number one i'd never heard of it before it came out on rift tracks that's not uncommon, but I guess it is uh, like you know, like with the Amazing Mr. X, a more a more well known, lesser known movie. It has you know, it has a cult following. Yeah, I never heard of it, and when I'm wa I'm watching this thing, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Like, you, know, you can't be serious. This movie exists with Red Brown running around in a in a loincloth, and, and it's it's. It's like prehistoric. It's prehistoric man time, and uh, but also kind of sci-fi a little bit until it takes a hard sci-fi turn in the last like five minutes. Um, it's literally the end of the movie. Yeah, it's like wait, what, what, what? Oh, okay, fine, whatever. The movie's over. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> it's lost to the ether. But um, just to see David Ryder, Captain America, whatever. Yeah. We see him running around and be like, and this was like his first or like one of his first big main things that he's in. I don't know how he had a career after this. You he know? got lucky, it, I guess. Uh, yeah, this uh, this movie and, and the whole thing. It was supposed to be like a sort of a like a like a surprise plot twist uh -huh. that it was going to be sci-fi and like oh, it's post-apocalyptic. <laughs> Except in the title of the movie. It kind of gives it away. The man from... What, what? Hunter from the future. The hunter from the future. Like, uh, hello, guys. Don't give away your plot twist in your title. I just thought it was... Like, a, I just thought it was a stupid... Uh, I just thought it was a stupid title. I didn't think they were going to do anything with it. Because, <laughs> like, how often do titles like that actually pay off in Rift Tracks? Not often. Yeah. You know, it's like, just think of all the Batman shorts... <laughs> and how often the titles paid off in those. So yeah. I'm kind of inoculated to those kind of, you know, subtitles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a it's a trash pile. It's it's a uh, uh, like you know like we said the uh, to use a overused uh, 2017, 2018, 2019 term that I, hopefully it goes away soon. It's a dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. 
Uh, good good movie choice though for that one. Good oh yeah, choice. actually, I would say I give it an A. Our next release from February first is another Riff Tracks presents title. This time from Matthew Elliott and Ian Potter, Purple Death from Outer Space. Mm. This one is, uh, it's actually from 1966, based on the 1940 serial of Flash Gordon Conquers the Universe. It's segments from the first half of that serial edited together into a film and then released in 1966. Very badly. Yeah. And and people said that it that it was better than the serial. I don't know if that I don't know if that is possible. <laughs> but uh like now wasn't there at the time because this was done by Matthew and Ian, wasn't it at the, at the time I seem to remember there being a little bit of uh controversy amongst some fans about them doing this like Maybe this was a quote unquote sacred cow or some garbage like that. Uh, what it remember was, that at all? Yes, I, I actually do. I I really remember this because I kind of got into it um, in okay. a couple places. Uh, but the email that was sent out uh, for announcing this this riff release um, had Flash Gordon in the subject line. Okay. So people thought that they were going to click on it and it was going to be Mike, Kevin and Bill doing the 1980s flash Gordon film. Why would they think that they just saw the name flash Gordon and assumed that that's the only flash Gordon that's ever existed in the history of television and film, I guess. I don't know, but everybody was, well, not everybody, but all of these people that were complaining about it were upset because it was not that movie. And it was instead one of the old black and whites. And it was, the quote British guy is doing it. Oh well, that, that's about all I can say about that. <laughs> yeah, it's just people thinking that they're owed something, yeah. and when they don't get it, they get upset. You know how people are these days. Oh yeah, it's um, it's 2019, whatever that means. Yeah, I, I don't get the line of thinking. You know, to each their own, I guess. Yeah. But that's seriously, don't act do. like that. Don't yeah. don't. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's bad. If you if you act that way, just rethink your life. Anyway, <laughs> let's just let's just move on to do yeah, another thing yep. that got people riled up, and for different reasons altogether. Oh, a release this. from yeah. from February eighth from Mike, Kevin, and Bill, Killers from Space. Woo! Killers from Space, ping pong, ping pong ball, I aliens. Do, yes. Do, 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 do. Now, if you're not familiar with Killers from Space, it's about aliens from. Astron Delta, Delta. Who want to exterminate humanity and plan on doing this by using giant mutated insects and reptiles. And it, <sighs> and, and it just this, this gigantic big idiot pilot who it, like he dies and then he's brought back to life by the ping pong balls. Ooh. Ping pong ball faces. Now, okay, so so here's here's where the controversy, uh, if you can even use that word. Uh, stemmed from this one so they kind of went back to the well on this one but them going back to the well for movies is, is nothing new before this release all of the ones that they that they were redoing were from the mst3k days this one the guys had done in the extremely short-lived film crew days mm -hmm. if you're unfamiliar with the film crew it was kind of the in-between for mst3k and riff tracks uh, they did some intros for movies on Encore. They did a few review segments and stuff for NPRs, All Things Considered. And they released four Rift movies, this being the first of those four. And they're excellent. And they're, they're all four of them are, are outstanding. They're great to watch. You can get them digitally through RiftTracks.com. The other part of this, so people were upset, like, oh, you're doing this one, you Killers from Space, you guys just did this one uh, 10 years ago, blah, blah, blah. But and now 13. it's... Yeah. It's also the fact that the print quality was not the same. <laughs> well, well, I mean... Oh, oopsie. Oh, well. I mean, like, we've seen this in Phantom Creeps. We've seen this in uh, Giant from the Unknown more recently. I mean, yeah, the print, you know, the print quality 
from uh, movies like this from like the from the fifties. It's not going to be great, guys. I yeah. mean, they're old, um, yeah. and they probably don't have access to the same resources they did when you know, they were working for Shout Factory on uh, the film crew. Yeah. Wake up, Dave. <laughs> yeah, but, but um, I just think that also, from what I understand, you know, they kind of wanted to take a second stab at it because I guess they thought that their first riff on it wasn't that great, um, which is fine. They're allowed. Um, I know me and Jeremy probably sound like Rift Tracks apologists, and there's a reason for that. We are. Yeah. Um, again, don't want to spend too much more time talking about this, but I think if you're a really big fan of those of the film crew riffs, and you know, and if you think it's just perfect sacred cow, don't touch it. You already did it. What's wrong with you? Kind of thing. Just don't get it. Just don't. <laughs> I mean, that's just like that's just like the the simplest thing. I mean. I mean, I'm going to get it, and I'm going to watch it and enjoy it. It's not going to hurt me any if you don't get it. So It can still exist separately from the other thing, and they can both still exist. If you, your, your previous copy of this that you might enjoy more or, or whatever isn't going to just disappear from the earth. It's still a thing. It's still there. Yes, yeah, it's not like Microsoft forcing an update on your operating system. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not like it's going to be like, okay, now it's going to be this one. You can't have your old one anymore. But anyway, this, this problem is not exclusive to Rift Tracks. I mean, we've no. talked a lot about whiny fandoms lately, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's not exclusive to them and it's not going to stop anytime soon, unfortunately. But it, it's a good, it's a good riff. Yeah. I, I like, mean, I, I like, I've, I've seen both riffs and I enjoy both riffs and I still like each of them for what they are. They're their own things. Moving on. Let's just get <laughs> off this subject and go on to our next VOD release. February 22nd brought us The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Woo! I mean, uh... <laughs> Now, it, it's not the one from Fantasia with Mickey Mouse, and it's not the other Disney one with Nick Cage. It is instead the one with Byron Taylor. Now, if you're thinking that name sounds familiar, you probably recognize him from Merlin the Return or Berserker Hell's Warrior or the Fairy King of R or the Little Unicorn. In fact, with this release, <laughs> Rift Tracks has done this kid's entire feature-length filmography. That's what I call legacy. And he was like, what? It, uh, did he turn into a jerk like that guy who played Anakin Skywalker, Jake <laughs> Lloyd? I, I, he just hasn't done anything. Um, oh, okay. So he could be a jerk, and we just don't know. Yeah, I, I think Berserker Hell's Warrior was actually the last one he was in. And he was like what Thor Junior in that? I'm just kidding. yeah, yeah. He was like the the younger version of uh, whoever he was. Yeah, whoever was that came from like the past. Yeah. I don't. I. You can't remember names of characters. You can't remember. It's, it's hard. It's so, so there's so much riff tracks. It's hard to remember the details of literally everything. Yeah, we try. Yeah. But yeah, if you've seen any of those other movies, you pretty much know what you're gonna get with this one. It's more of the same. Yeah, and see, you know, that was kind of my. I was actually pretty excited when I saw that this was coming up. And um, and then I saw it, and I was kind of kind of let down with the with the selection on it. I mean, because I kind of saw, you know, like you said, we 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 didn't see. I think they did one too many of these films, <laughs> and because it's just like 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 the only new thing we didn't see is that Kelly LeBrock uh, of Ghost House fame. We still don't know who's more popular, or her or Kim Bassinger in Denver. Right. Um, I don't think we'll ever. It'll be like. Getting to the center of a Tootsie Pop, we'll never know we'll the answer. Never ever know who's more popular in Denver, uh, Kim Bassinger or Kelly LeBrock. <laughs> but in this movie, uh, I learned that Kelly LeBrock has breasts and that she thinks that they're fantastic. That's what I learned from this movie. Well, if you had ever seen um, some of the other movies that she was in years prior to this, like Weird Science, you would definitely have known. <laughs> That she had breasts. Uh, but it's just like, okay, geez, we get it. Put them away. Gosh, half the planet has those. We don't care. As far as the rest of the movie goes, it's just this standard peak, you know, peak viewing South Africa trying to. 
be passed off as England fantasy bullcrap, you know, and I thought it'd be, I thought it would be fun to revisit it. And I was just kind of let down like, okay, how many of the, like how many of these movies did they make like this? Like, you know, and the answer is a lot. They probably made Uh a lot more. I, I I found myself wanting to go back and watch the little, the little unicorn again, or Merlin, the return, both of those, I think as movies, I enjoyed them a little bit more. Like there was just that little bit of extra. Maybe it's just because I I saw them before this one. Fairy King is also. I think I it, it makes me want to go back and watch Fairy King a little bit. Yeah, that one was that one was pretty good. I mean, they're all they're all outstanding riffs. All five of these movies. That yeah, it has been in. Um, but it's it's kind of you know like going between Nightmare at Noon and uh, Mutant. It's kind of. They're, they it's feel like the same, the same movie. Yeah, they're they're very interchangeable at this point. Up next, March eighth brought us the the girl from Rio. Uh, uh, yeah, so, it was a, a co-production between West Germany, Spain, <laughs> and the United States from nineteen sixty eight. Uh, <laughs> it's a movie. I just like that it's that it's West <laughs> Germany. I mean, when. Because that hasn't been a thing since we were kids. <laughs> I didn't even realize it said that until... until West Germany. <laughs> anyway, continue. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> the, the warrior women from Femina <laughs> are being led by their queen, and they're attacking wealthy men as a part of a long-term plan to take over the world. And yeah. they're stopped by a secret agent, you know. Yeah, the, the vibe, this guy, the energy, this secret agent in this movie, you could tell that, like, the energy, like, he wants to be Roger Moore so bad. <laughs> the thing is, he doesn't remind, like, you can tell he wants to be Roger Moore, but doesn't remind you of Roger Moore at all. No. And it's like, you know, Roger Moore is funny. He's charming. This guy is neither of those things. And the whole thing with, like, the girl army is just ridiculous. And you're just left wondering, like, who thought this was a good idea? The West Germans, apparently. Yeah, well. This this is not, definitely not a good, I mean, it's on Rift Tracks. Yeah, so. well, I mean, there's a reason it's on Rift Tracks. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not good. Like, there's, like, so moving on from The Girl from Rio, we've got yet another Rift Tracks Presents film definitely a lot of those so far this year yeah that's um you know we were saying before it's just rift tracks presents is stepping up and you know i just i hope they keep doing that this one came out on march 22nd and it is she demons directed by someone you might recognize from a release that we talked about a few weeks back richard kuna yes that's right the director of Giant from the Unknown, oh. also directed this one. In fact, She Demons was actually originally released as a double feature with Giant from the Unknown. So did they have to like come through and like wake audiences up, or like did they have to have like a flow sheet? Like okay, this is like like when they were exiting the theaters. Like okay, this is what really happened in these movies. You know, I because I feel like especially after Giant from the Unknown, I I would have appreciated something like that yeah i mean they they probably had to come through in the the intermission between the films with their their little old old school usher flashlights with the big cones Mm -hmm. on the end of them and wake everybody up and be like all right hey the next movie's starting either wake up or get out (laughs) well they already paid i mean it's like you know like just you know let them sleep you know it'll add to the Whatever. I don't they're know. In, they're enjoying a nice air-cooled movie. <laughs> uh, she Demons is about uh, a rich, spoiled heiress uh, and an explorer and their crewmen, and they get uh, shipwrecked on an island during, like, a, a hurricane or something. And they find out that there's a Nazi scientist there, and he's conducting experiments and he's got like like a bunch of beauty queens trapped there, and he's taking stuff out of their glands and injecting yeah. it into his wife, who's like half burnt up, and it's really just looks like Voodoo Man in that respect. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, it's goofy. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, 1958, Nazis, of course. It, it kind of sounds like uh, another movie that I watched last year for, for Halloween, um, Shockwaves, with uh, Peter Cushing and John Carradine in it. What? Yeah, about underwater Nazi zombies and people stuck on a deserted island. And, yeah. It, Freaking 50s B-movies, man. I was like... <laughs> There's nothing like them. Yeah, sure, sure, sure not. I mean, like, and there's always just like, there's an island and something. They crash on the island and something nefarious is going on. And you know what? That's we're we're gonna be talking about that about this exact same thing later on again in the podcast. Yeah, so, except that movie is a bit more entertaining. Yeah, a little, a little tiny bit, yes. But yeah, this is was another yet another solid. Uh, entry in the Rift Tracks Presents catalog from Bridget and Mary Jo. Uh, you know what? You should pick it up and watch it along with Giant from the Unknown in the double feature that it was originally intended as. Oh, I think I might do that after we finish recording. That might be an interesting thing to do. Well, maybe wait till tomorrow so you don't fall asleep. Oh, that's right. Well, maybe. <laughs> Because these movies will yeah. put you out, Dave. Yeah, well, I, I I know Giant from the Unknown will. I know that for a fact. On to a movie that definitely will not put you out. Nope. Our next release, March 29th, Rats, Night of Terror. And who boy, this movie. Oh, well, this yeah. This is one well. of those uh, Italian movies. Uh, yeah, uh... Survivors of the Great Nuclear Holocaust of 2015. <laughs> you all remember that, right? <laughs> A couple <of> years ago. <laughs> if you wondered what happened to to us as a people in 2015, 15, that's what it was. Uh, they, the survivors that we're following in this movie, there's two groups of survivors. There's the wealthy people that live in nice, plush, underground bunkers. Ooh, and then you got, fancy. Yeah, and then you got the surface dwellers. Uh, <laughs> and we follow a group of them. Uh, they're trying to live in an abandoned village that they found. There was all kinds of food and everything, greenhouses, all that stuff. Only to be overcome by mutant rats. <laughs> Yeah. And this movie has a twist ending. Should we tell yeah. them what the twist ending was? I think we should, yeah. The two remaining survivors of this group, Chocolate and <laughs> Video, are facing certain doom. <laughs> and they, uh, they are saved at the last minute by people wearing hazmat suits. But when they take off their masks, they're actually humanoid rats. Oh, no. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yes. my god! It's oh, they named the, they named the black girl chocolate. Like, come on, guys! This is 2019. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. Uh, now our director. Uh, oh, this this, this guy. This guy directed Dude. a ton of like knockoff movies in the 80s. He did like Zombie Three and a bunch of other stuff like that. But he also directed one of my most recent. Favorite terrible movies, Shocking Dark, Terminator 2. Oh, my God. And here's the thing. I've seen that movie as well. You made me watch it. And um, why did you do that? You watched it of your own free will. Yeah, I sure did. And But the thing is, is that that movie, I don't even know what to say about Shocking Dark, uh, but it shares many of the same actors. And the, the actress that plays Chocolate is in Shocking Dark as well. Yeah, she's the the commander of the Megaforce. The other interesting thing about Shocking Dark that I'm just going to throw out there, it was written by the same guy who wrote uh, Troll 2. Just Oh, God. Um, the one thing I remember the most about Rats, and that I probably will, is that for, for a long time, is that um, there's, a, uh, there's a scene where... Two of the characters are. Uh, <laughs> I know what you're going three, for. There are three characters in this scene, and one of uh, and two of these characters are engaged in um, intense coitus <laughs> in a sleeping bag. Like they're showing 
all the action, like all of it. And what? And their friend is just like up there, just like watching <laughs> it, talking to him. But the thing is, I'm more distracted with just just how. Forgive me, but it's like wham, 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 wham. What is just like what the hell? Like, are you still like 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 you're down with this movie? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Wow! Oh my God! I can't believe it's just like it. It might have been like the most explicit thing I've ever seen on a riff tracks. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. It was. They were in the sleeping bag. But yeah, it was. I remember you sending me your initial reactions to that scene. I was just like, what? 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 Why? Why? We we didn't need to see that movie. My the one thing that that sticks with me still from this this movie is the conveyor belt of rats. Uh. <laughs> like where it's just like a bunch of fake rats and what looked like basically a conveyor belt and they were like coming to attack and oh it was amazing. Good I loved it. You know, whenever I see stuff like that, like stuff that's like obvious, uh, I guess that's obviously fake. I think of like the ghost house thing. Dun, 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 dun. That's what I think. Like, like it doesn't matter. I mean, like, and that's one of those times in Rats when it's just like dun, dun, dun. Like you could turn the like you could turn the music down in Rats and just put that ghost house theme on there. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 like, you know it's just like yeah. it, it just fits you can put that on anything it it would have it would have been very fitting there either that or the uh the other little tune from ghost house <sighs> yeah now i'm thinking Christ. about that and and toast to ghost house all you let's drink up da 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 Duh. Like that, you know, where Kevin sings that song from Ghost House. <laughs> Guys, we're big fans of Ghost House. We love Ghost House. We, we oh. could not get enough of Ghost House. Like, I mean, guy, riff tracks. I know some. Of you, I know some of you guys listen. If you guys ever do an October riff tracks live ever, ever again, Ghost House. Oh. I just, like, I will walk to Nashville for that. <laughs> I would love. A live show of Ghost House. Oh that my gosh, just, that would, would be, be amazing. It would be, it would be fantastic. Ghost House, Ghost House, and Roller Gator. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Ghost House does fit in with this because it is another one of those weird Italian horror movies. Yep. With the weird overdubbing, that's always just a little bit off. Yeah, <laughs> it's like what is happening? It's like this. It's like it's. I mean, and this this happens in Rats as well, so it's relevant. It's like. The, the the movie was filmed in English. Yeah. But but they dub it back into English and it makes it, it makes the movie look like it wasn't filmed in English, even though you can tell that it was. It's, it's a conundrum. It's like the uh the last new release we got with the Sherlock Holmes with Christopher Lee, where they dubbed out Christopher Lee's lines. Yeah, yeah. It's like it makes no sense. <sighs> Speaking of uh Rift Tracks presents. Here's another one. Came out April 5th. This one, uh, Bridget and uh, Mary Jo, scared to death. <laughs> now, this is not the same scared to death that Matthew and Ian did. Yeah, way back in 2014, which is excellent with Bella Lugosi that you guys should all do. We guys should all go get. This yeah. is, in fact, a completely different movie. Just happens to have the same title. Came out in 1980 or 81, somewhere yeah, around there. It, it, yeah. I've seen, you know, when you look up a movie, it gives you two different dates depending on the on the site. Mm -hmm. But Scared to Death, uh, this one is about a bioengineered creature called a Syngenor. I think that's how they say in the movie. I don't remember. Uh, it stands for Synthesized Genetic Organism. It uh, hides in the city sewers and hits the streets at night in search of human spinal fluid. What? Wait, wait. Well, I mean, I know, I know a place where you can get that super easy. <laughs> uh, this was uh, the first uh, feature film directed by William Malone. Uh, he also directed. Well, he did a bunch of, uh, he did three episodes of Freddy's Nightmares. He did two episodes of Tales from the Crypt. He did an episode of the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids TV show. And That was a thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Um, I think maybe it only had one season, but yeah, it was weird because none of the actors from the movies were in there, and it's just the it's one of those weird things they did in the late 80s where they made a TV series based off of a successful movie but changed everything about it. And he also directed a remake of a film that you enjoy, uh, House on Haunted Hill. Ooh. And Fear.com, which I, I never watched, but I remember seeing everything for it and how terrible it looked. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought it was interesting that he, he did the remake of house on haunted hill it's probably not as good oh of course not how could like, it be? like i just like you know house on haunted hill i mean like it's perfection it's like the perfect movie yeah the the remake had uh n- no um let's see anybody we would recognize uh jeffrey rush eh. famke jansen <laughs> Uh, Tay Diggs. <laughs> wait, who? So, no, wait a minute. So, uh, uh, are these guys? Are these all like one for ones, or are these all like new characters? Uh, I don't know. She, uh, Famke is Evelyn. Uh, Tay Diggs is Eddie. Chris Kattan. <laughs> oh, Chris Kattan. Well, there goes that. That I haven't heard that name in a very long time. Pritchett, Jeffrey Rush is Stephen Price. Uh, Allie Larder is in this. Wow, that's another name I haven't heard forever. As Sarah Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey, uh, I think isn't he Wayun in Deep Space Nine? Uh, yeah. He was also Reanimator, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah. Jeffrey Combs does a lot of uh, wonderful. Yeah, he was Herbert West, and uh, he was Agent Dammers and the Frighteners, and yeah, he does a lot of these uh, a lot of these movies, and he always does a great job. Like he's <laughs> nine times out of ten. He is the best part of whatever cheesy movie he's in. He did Brainiac's voice in Injustice 2, and it was excellent. Yeah, he does a lot of great voice work. Yeah, well, he has he, he has such a great, 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 you know, just, he has a great voice. I really wish he would use it in a Rip Tracks movie someday. None of those, none of those character names match up with any of the names from House on Haunted Hill, with the exception of Pritchard. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, scared to death <laughs> and we kind of, and we kind of veered off track there a little bit. An ex cop, um, who's, who's working as a, as it says in the, the thing here, a hack novelist was called <laughs> out of retirement to, uh, help investigate the string of deaths, um, from this creature. But yeah, That's it's, really funny. it's, you know, it's not a great movie, but it's, it is a really, really good riff. Mm-hmm. Um, our final riff that we're going to take a look at today. Oh yeah. I've been waiting for this is so far my favorite riff of the year for the first half of 2019. This is my favorite riff from April 24th zombie, AKA I eat your your skin skin. (laughs) has nothing to do with skin eating. Absolutely not. But, there, there is at least somewhat of a reason uh, for that for that title. Uh, the film was shot entirely in Florida. Uh, they they used a different title, uh, Caribbean Adventure, to disguise the fact uh, that it was a zombie film, so they didn't scare off potential investors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the movie did not find a distributor. It was put on the shelf until the seventies, early seventies. Um, when uh, Jerry Gross uh, bought it and retitled it to form the double bill, I drink your blood and I eat your skin. The film uh, tells me he didn't watch the movie. No, or maybe he did. And he's just like, the only way I'm going to sell this turd is if I put it with this other movie and make people think it's going to be gross. Uh, The film follows the adventures of a playboy novelist who travels to Voodoo Island in the Caribbean <laughs> to, to research for a new book. Uh, while he's there, he uh, en- encounters a voodoo cult whose leader intends to take over the world with an army of zombies. They figured out that if you inject people with this certain snake venom, that it turns them into bug-eyed papier-mâché zombies. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. 
that the lead in this movie, much like the guy in Trucker's Wife. What that he just awful? Yes, just a terrible, just terrible, terrible person. Skeevy, scuzzy human being. Well, at least this guy didn't attempt to to to, to rape anybody in in their yeah. motel room. Oh my god! <sighs> but yeah, this movie. Oh my gosh! I love this movie. I love this riff. I gotta agree with you, Jeremy. That like for for my money. So far, with the exception of maybe last week's riff, I don't think anything this year has come close to Zombie, a.k.a. I Eat Your Skin, as far as just, like, the amount of fun I had watching it. Because it's like, like, like it, it starts off with what you're saying is this, this dude who's completely unlikable, and he's just <laughs> chatting up, all, he's just chatting up all these married women and they're just be like, oh well, which of us gets to commit adultery with him first? Right. It feels the way the way that that he is shown, like initially, it feels like a scene from The Bachelor, like the way he's surrounded by these women and they're all just like swooning over him. Yeah, and it's it'd be like, and then be like, hey, that's my wife. Come here, my wife. <laughs> like <laughs> this was like. This was a movie in 1950, or like, or 1964. Really, 1964? You're down with this? You're doing it's 1964, and you're gonna do this? Come on! Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I just and just the way that it built because also part of it, you can tell part of it wants to be a comedy too, uh, and it has all these just, I mean, not just the lead character. The lead character has a, a like a traveling companion, <laughs> who. Uh, I think her name is Coral, I want to say. It's either There's... Coral or Carl or something. like. Yeah, Car- yeah. Um, it, is, it is Coral, but most of the time it sounds like Carl. Carl? Carl. And just like, it's like Harley Quinn without all the charming aspects of Harley Quinn. Yeah. Um, which is like everything. And it's just <laughs> like with this, with this nasally obnoxious, stupid woman. And her uh, husband. Yep. And uh, who are just hanging out with them for what other... Be like, we have to help you write your novel. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and, then it, like, uh, and then there's like... And then he falls in love with this... There's another idiot woman. And I mean, like, it, like, 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 this movie does not treat women very well. No. Well, I mean, uh, well, you gotta look at when it was made. That's yeah. kind of telling for that. And this woman, the uh, the daughter of the, I don't know if he was the cult leader or or what the deal was with that guy, in that mansion on this island. I, I uh, think he was like a like a he was researching or trying to research like a cure for cancer or something. She like she falls in love with and like, she falls in love with him, <laughs> and I don't know why that happened. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and she was, you know, definitely a few years younger than he was. Oh, by uh, quite a few. <laughs> like, if that movie was made in 2016, that chick would have been out on that island catching Pokemon Go's. That's kind of like the age difference. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, look at this. The guy who directed Zombie, I Eat Your Skin. What about him? What hilarious, he, unexpected thing are you going to tell me? He directed The Horror of Party Beach. What? <laughs> I believe it. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it like, really does. Well, I'll be like, horny, 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 horny. Oh. <laughs> I love all these weird little connections like this. It's like uh, seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, but for terrible movies. Yeah, for all this awful stuff that we've all seen because we're all Riff Tracks fans. Ah. But yeah, no, but this is, guys, if you're listening, Riff Tracks, if you're listening, Zombie, I Eat Your Skin, I think was like, I don't know if you guys intended it to be a superior Riff of the Year, but it definitely, definitely is. It's, oh, yeah. It's, um, it's an A... I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. I was, I was super duper into it. I, I loved it. 
you know, I'm going to, and in fact, I'll probably watch it again here soon. Now that we're talking about it, remember all the fun, great times I had with zombie, AKA I eat your skin. And I want to yeah, watch it again. Like, I know I always enjoy the Rift Tracks movies, but this one was, it was that one, that first surprise of the year where it just yeah. like, it turns into one of those riffs that you want to watch over and over and over again and again and again. Yeah. And I definitely but, have, I'm going to do it again now. So like ghost house. Well, I don't know if it's as great as ghost house. I mean, ghost house, that's a pretty high bar. Well, I mean, but, just the, yeah. similar, like, you know, where we want to watch it over and over. Oh again. yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I think we could both agree. Ghost house is, uh, uh that's, yeah. that's one of my top all time riff tracks releases. We, we'll save that discussion for another episode, mm -hmm. but yeah. Zombie, I eat your skin. If you slept on this one for whatever reason, go pick it up right now. I don't care if you're at work. I don't care if you're uh, at, at home. I don't care if you're in the hospital. I don't care if you're driving. Well, I mean, maybe I care if you're driving, but stop whatever it is you're doing. Go to RiffTracks.com and buy this Riff right now. I don't care if you're driving. In fact, I actually <laughs> do care if you're driving. In fact... That makes me that, that makes me want to encourage you to get it more. So if you so if you're driving or if you're in the movies, get out your cell phone right now. Dave, go buy a zombie, aka I eat your skin. Dave, <laughs> stop encouraging horrible behavior. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna wrap this up right there. I don't think there's a better place to stop. Uh, oh my gosh, that was great. This is this is the best true blue true blue riff cast there's ever been. I'm gonna come to these things totally exhausted more often. Yes. Yes, we're just gonna stop right now. We're going out on a high note, like George Costanza. I'm out. Yes, I'm Jeremy. You can find me at pbandawesome.com. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at pbandawesome. You can follow the True Blue Riffcast on Twitter at tbriffcast. Oh, you want me to go? Yeah. Okay, I'm Dave. You can find me at sugarraydodge.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook. You can search for me for uh, on Facebook as Sugar Ray Dodge or Charlie B. I'm a wrestler. I wrestle in a bean bass. My name's Charlie B. It's hilarious. Uh, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at, at sugarraydodge. Uh, and I think that's it. See you guys next week with the second half of our uh, first half of Rift Tracks of 2019 so far. I think I did that right. Part two.